Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Jason DeBono, who is in Florida. How are you doing, Jason? Hey, John. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. Jason is Vice President with New, New View Trust. And a lot of the work that you do, uh, you were saying, is with helping people with retirement investment outside of um, outside of stocks, right? And um, and I think it'd be a good topic for us to talk about today is maybe introduce people to some of those investments that that your clients, um, you know, put their money in. Maybe things that people have never considered. Maybe things they haven't considered in a while. And, and talk us through some of those uh, options because. I mean, let's face it, a lot of people just, you know, they put their money in retirement accounts and IRAs or 401ks and all of that. And they just pick the stocks quickly from, from the website and they think good. And maybe once in a blue moon, they go and sort of switch them around a bit. But generally speaking, you know, they probably a lot of the time stick with their original um, choices and maybe don't consider some other options that they, they might have that a company like yours could help them with. Yeah, I think you kind of alluded to the old set it and forget it model. And, yeah. and you know, I think maybe at some point uh, in in uh, in history that made great logical sense. But I think most people realize today, you know, active management um, in, in investments is important. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to do in the stock market. I mean, let's face it, uh, regardless of how smart you are, what your business background is, acumen and understanding, uh, who in the heck could have possibly navigated the last seven months uh, in the stock market, right? I mean, if if we'd have thought that if the stocks did what we thought they would do, they'd be you know half the value that they were in March. Yet somehow, uh, some stocks are through the roof. Some have quadrupled and and gone up six and eight times. So, you know what happens for a lot of investors is they put money in there, they set it, they forget it, they hope it goes up, and they just have no knowledge. Yet mm -hmm. most of what we find is most of our customers with their personal money are not buying stocks and bonds. They're buying real estate and they're investing in private businesses. So we're not here to help people go out and do something that's foreign to them that they've never mm -hmm. done. We're here to say, hey, if those types of investments are attractive to your personal money, we can help be a custodian that allows you to use your retirement money to go out and make the same investments and take advantage of the tax benefits IRAs offer. Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit um, first about uh, about real estate because there's a lot of different types of real estate investments that you can make, and I think sometimes people think that real estate investment just means like buying an extra property or whatever. They don't realize that there's a, a number of just maybe you can talk us through some of those uh, some of the different options. Yeah, I mean you you uh, you hit it on the head when when I started in this business 15 years ago. You know, I only knew real estate as I was just graduating college. I only knew real estate through the lens of my family. And mm -hmm. my dad had owned a couple of rental properties, properties that we lived in, you know, moved and my dad never sold. And, you know, I always thought, yeah, you, real estate is you own a rental property, you have tenants, you fight with them to get paid. And when they move out, you go in there and clean up after them and rinse and repeat. And, it, you know, as, as frustrating as that was as a kid to kind of be in there dragging the carpet out, I also understood, you know, paying off the mortgage and it made sense. Now, you know, here I am 15 years later, and, and I still don't know that, that I'm certain of all the ways people are making money in real estate sure. uh, because there's so many strategies. So, you know, we see things like rental real estate is a big piece of our real estate um, um, asset class, uh, but we see a lot of raw land. We see a lot of development. Uh, I've got clients that own burial plots. I've got clients that own uh, boat slips. If it's deeded, you can buy it. Uh, and mm -hmm. then we see a significant amount of real estate in the form of syndication. So these are yeah. kind of packaged up deals for people to go out. And this could be things like, you know, when you drive around town, uh, you know, you see a Walgreens. Well, I can assure you the land underneath that is owned in some sort of investment fund. And we probably have clients that, that own it, um, you know, shopping plazas, strip malls, uh, commercial development, uh, multifamily, office buildings, mm -hmm. complexes, hotel funds. Uh, it's amazing how much of this stuff that seems like it's big million dollar, you know, uh, groups that own that's really owned by 100, 200, 500 individual investors alongside some big developer uh, that's managing that self storage. I mean, I could go on and on. But yeah, uh, but yeah if it's deeded real estate, you can do it. 
Yeah, I think that I think that's a really interesting point from people because again, sometimes they think, okay, if I'm going to buy um, into real estate, it's, it's, I'm going to buy a house or I'm going to buy an apartment. But to your point, there's lots of different ways you can buy into a syndication and a multifamily block. Where yeah, are you buying a you're, are you buying into an apartment? No, you're buying into multiple apartments, but you're yep. you know you're fractional fractional owner or whatever. And I think this is this is great because people don't realize that you can do these things. Plus, you can. You know, you can buy into something in completely the other side of the country, right? Sight unseen, um, as long as you, you know, do the good research on it. Well, and that's the beauty is, you know, I think for, for you know, and I'll give you an example. I'm invested into an apartment complex in Dallas. I live in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just outside of Dallas. And, you know, I'm not a multifamily expert by any means, but there's about 400 um, doors. So, you know, what I love about it is I'm not reliant, one, I'm, I'm, I'm a very small piece with a lot of other investors. Sure. Uh, there's about six or eight people that put the deal together and, and they've invested, you know, 20, 25% of the money. Uh, so they're at equal risk, if not significantly higher financial risk than I am. And, and if we, if somebody moves out, I don't even notice it. You know, one rent, uh, renter or two renters isn't gonna matter. Whereas if I took that same money and bought a single family property, Right. I've got to find the property. I've got to evaluate it. I've got to manage it. I got to oversee it. So, you know, I do absolutely nothing on this property yet. I could look at the numbers and understand that, you know, if there's 400 units and the average unit rents for X and they spread it 80% of the time and the expenses stay within this boundary, you know, we can make 6%. If we get to 90% rental, we can make 12%. 100% rental, we can make 18%. And the numbers are easy. And if I compare that to a passive investment in the stock market, I can't run any numbers. I can't understand mm -hmm. the market. You know, I can understand what Tesla does, you know, but how in the world do I know how they make money and whether or not they will, I just know they're popular. And I'm not yeah. a fan of investing on in a popularity contest. Yeah, no, and I think, that, I think that's a great point because yeah, you probably have a lot of armchair experts who go, oh yeah, yeah, you know, buy into Tesla, buy into these. But as you say, if you said, why and what's their path to profitability or are they ever going to be profitable what's you know what's the long-term outlook i mean nobody has a clue right so as you said you're you're it's it may be educated guessing but it's guessing well i think that's the part that that is such a challenge i mean there was a point and i don't know where it is today but in the last 30 60 days there was a point where tesla right with about 350 million dollars of you know gap-based profits Right. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, there's some fuzzy numbers counting some sales, sure. future sales, et cetera. Not saying they're doing anything wrong, but mm -hmm. that they were valued more than Walmart, which has like 11 or 15 billion dollars of profit. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, if I had to write a check to buy one of these companies, yeah. who in their right mind, if you had the money to write the check, would ever buy Tesla for more than you could buy Walmart for? Yet that's how we're investing today. And that to me is, I don't care who you are, you can never tell me that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, it, it doesn't. But I guess they, I guess that's coming back to um, one of our earlier points. So I guess that's where it comes down to in some ways, convenience, right? Because, or perceived convenience, because a lot of people think, okay, I have my IRAs or whatever, and um, it's easy because I can just go onto the website and I can pick my you know, mutual funds or my stocks or whatever, and it's all really easy and done. And it seems like investing outside of the stock market, like in real estate or something, seems a lot harder uh, perception wise. Yeah, and, and it's, it's reality. I mean, it is harder, um, you know, as a general rule, because you have to go, the investments are not, you know, put onto to a, a website where you mm -hmm. just scroll through and, and get whatever info you want. You know, you've got to go out and look for, for private investments and you've got to understand them and you've got to dig and you've got to research and do your due diligence. So, um, yeah, the, the reward is better, but certainly the effort to get there is going to be higher. Right. It's like a good yeah. diet. Uh, there's no easy way to do it. You got to put in the work and effort if you want to achieve the results. And, uh, you know, our business isn't for everybody, but but for those that say, yeah, I want more and I'm willing to put in a little more work to get a little further mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, you know, that's where, where self-directing an account can be, you know, a great opportunity. Yeah. And, and I like uh, what you alluded to earlier, because I did talk to somebody a number of weeks ago who actually just specialized in investments in storage units. So, and again, it was, to be honest, it was something I'd never thought about, you know, uh, before that. And I think that that's part of the thing is, as you outlined, 
you know, there are so many different types of real estate investments that uh, it's when you educate yourself, you suddenly realize, wow, so I don't have to buy necessarily an apartment or a house or whatever. I could buy into a storage unit. I could, as you said, what you said, burial plots, boat slips. I mean, there's so many different ones out there that it's amazing when people, when you hear about this, you suddenly go, well, that's interesting. Storage, I thought, was an interesting one because it's almost like storage units are somewhat like, you know, whichever way the recess, whichever way the economy goes, storage units are still pretty popular. Like people downsizing need a storage unit, people moving because they're whatever need a storage unit. Yeah. When the economy is good, they're buying more stuff. So they need a yeah. storage unit. It's what I love about, about investing and I love about real estate. And this is the part where it is just like the stock market. You know, you can invest into lots of different stocks that do lots of different things for lots of different reasons. And candidly, that part's really cool. You mm -hmm. know, it is it is really cool that you can invest into Tesla and 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 kind of see the future of, you know, look into the future from a, a vehicle, you know, manufacturing perspective. So from that perspective, it's great. But from a real estate standpoint, it's it's back of the napkin math to evaluate the deal. And there's no such thing as any sort of math you can ever do to evaluate a stock investment. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we talked about uh, real estate investment. One other thing you mentioned at the beginning was investing in, in private companies. So talk to me a little bit about that, because most people would probably say, OK, you know, that's for big investors or that's for people with, with lots of money and lots of experience in a, in a particular you know, industry to do that kind of thing. That's not something I could easily do. Well, you're right in the sense that it all those things are true. I mean, it is for big companies and people mm -hmm. with experience, but not exclusively. Right. Um, the only difference that big companies have is they can be a lot, big companies can afford to lose a lot more because they have the, and you know, there's a, a saying in private equity, which is kind of these groups that, that have billions of dollars that go sure. invest. Uh, and it says you can lose money on 99 companies and make money on one as long as the one is Google. So yeah. You know, they're playing the odds and the numbers and they're willing to lose on three and win on one because they're going to win times 10 and lose, right, times one, three or four times. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that, that, you know, the average investor, the average person, if you will, listening today can all of a sudden go and start investing into private companies. That's really not, uh, you know, kind of its intention or purpose. But what it does say is, you know, if I've got a friend that's starting a business and I can understand what the financials are of the business and more importantly, right, I can look and say, well, John, I really know you. I know your work ethic. Yeah. I trust all of that. It doesn't mean I can make money, but it means, hey, you know what? From a diversity standpoint, am I better off investing 25 grand with you and your business model that I can see and really touch and feel? Or am I better buying 25 grand worth of Tesla, which other than knowing what their cars are, I don't have the first clue of how they make money and whether or not it's truly profitable and sustainable. So that's really the difference. It doesn't make me a better investor, or give me more opportunity. It just means I'm diversifying into something I've got a little bit more control over. Yeah, and it's not, and 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 in the example you used there, it's not because you know pretty much anybody who has some money to invest, regardless of whether it's a small amount or large amount. Um, you know, those opportunities do come up sometimes when you, you know, friends and family, et cetera, you know, people who want to, um, uh, you know, people who are starting businesses. And if you have some way of evaluating it, if you think it's a, it's a good bet, it's a nice, as you say, it's a nice way of diversifying. And it's a nice way of sort of getting hands on with one of your investments. Yeah. I mean, Elon Musk has a lot of people that invested early on in him. And there's a lot of individuals that, stand, mm -hmm. that, that have become billionaires. I mean, go back and look at all of these big companies. And that's not really what we're trying to do. Those are like sure. golden goose, right? The lottery ticket. Yeah. But yeah. there's a yeah. lot of very successful non-public investments right in everybody's backyard um, that have lots of private investors. And they, they, you don't have to have a million bucks to invest. Right. If you see somebody's vision and their idea and you believe in the vision and the model and you believe in them as individuals and you're willing to take the risk because all investments come with risk, mm -hmm. um, then it could be a great opportunity. So, you know, again, wh what I love about what we do is we're not here to say you should do it. We're here to say you can yeah. do it. And yeah. the alternative is, is the marketplace, the brokerage firms are telling you you can't do it. And that's not true either. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point, because I think it's, it's to give people 
more options and realize that you know when it comes to investing your money you're not restricted uh, you're not restricted in where you can invest it doesn't all have to be in the stock market and you don't and if you go outside the stock market working with somebody like you you don't need to know a lot about this you can learn about it and you can find an investment that feels comfortable for you and then have that diversification that everybody needs yep yeah, so what's one? Um, so, um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody if they were considering, if they're listening to this and they're saying, okay, this sounds interesting? Um, what's the first steps they should take? Well, you know, I think it depends on where they are. So, I'll, I'll slice that up if that's okay. Yeah, um, so, I think to any of the listeners that are already making private investments with their personal money, uh, it's a very easy and logical transition to use their retirement money to make the same types of investments. So, you know, really, they're not learning how to buy real estate. They've already been doing that. They're not learning how to invest in private companies. They're already doing it. Um, where they need to go and get their knowledge is, is really, um, you know, on our website, call our office, because they don't need to know what they can do. They need to understand, how do I accomplish this through an IRA? What's different? What are the steps? And what's the process? For those that are listening that, that really have never made an investment like anything we're discussing and aren't really certain of, of whether or not that's attractive, it really doesn't matter what they think about from an IRA standpoint. If they're not interested in buying real estate, it doesn't matter whether they do it in their IRA or not. So I would recommend for, for those you know, people in that camp is find the local real estate club association group meetup. There's a lot of nonprofit ones. And I always recommend starting there because nobody, they're not trying to sell you anything to make money. They're trying to educate you. Um, but join a group, an association. I mean, there's a website called Bigger Pockets is a great website for alternative investing. It's kind of like the TripAdvisor forum. You know, you go read on before you take a trip. And this is kind of the forum that you go read on before you make investments. But um, you can evaluate lots of real estate educational content there uh, and beyond. But, you know, there's other websites, but they're one of the biggest. It's biggerpockets.com. Uh, and go take a look and see, because really the decision to invest, first decision you have to make is, do I want to invest into these Main Street-like asset classes, real estate, private companies, private mm -hmm. loans? If you already do it and the answer is yes, then it becomes, how do I use my IRA and what's the benefit? Yeah. If you're not there yet, uh, then you need to go look and explore these asset classes. I think for the vast majority of you, you'll find that they're not as hard to understand. They're not as complex as they appear. And the opportunity can significantly outweigh the risk if you know what you're doing and you evaluate the deals correctly. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's, a, that's great advice. And then obviously, as it is with most investing, is to be patient and have good realistic expectations. Because that's the other thing, unfortunately, about the stock market is that, that it, uh, it uh, unfortunately makes people very impatient and inflates their expectations, right? Yeah, it's a scary, it's scary when, when you have, you know, and, and I think the Robinhood app is a great example of something that, that its intentions are very good and, you know, giving people access and all of this. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Um, unfortunately, I mean, really, if you look at what the stock market has become, it's really become a lot like the blackjack or the craps table. <laughs> and too many people go there thinking they can't lose and too many people go there with expectations that they're going to double and triple their money quickly. And, you know, as, as, uh, as they say, that there's a reason why the, the biggest home run hitters, uh, it, you know, every year also lead the league in strikeouts, right? Right. And you got to ask yourself, if, can you afford that, right? Can you afford a home run and a strikeout? And, mm -hmm. and if you can't, don't play that game because it's a fool's game. And if you think you're going to make double digit returns in every investment you make, um, you have multi-billion dollar funds. I mean, these are people that have invested for years. And if you ask any of these good quality investment professionals, the Warren Buffetts of the world, if they can get to double digits on average, they're doing incredible. And yet you have mm -hmm. all these people that are sitting on these apps wondering why they're not making 10% a week. And, you know, that's, <laughs> it's, it's scary. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it is. And I think that's where people have to be a little more realistic. But this has been fantastic. Uh, Jason, Jason DeBono, uh, DeBono, sorry, of New View Trust. Um, all of Jason's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about your company and what you do. Yeah, so New View Trust Company, we're a South Dakota, South Dakota chartered public trust company. So we're regulated uh, by the Division of Banking. We're a public trust company. 
Uh, so we are, are licensed to hold assets and transact on behalf of our customers. And really what makes us unique is we're kind of like a Schwab, a Fidelity, a Merrill Lynch, but we don't provide advice and we don't limit your investments to stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So uh, we specialize, we can, we're referred to as an alternative asset custodian. So we can do exactly what Schwab can, but for Main Street investments, right? Real estate, mm -hmm. uh, promissory notes, private companies, precious metals, cryptocurrency, um, all these things that can legally be held. And, and our job is not to, to be your advisor, it's simply to be your custodian. Uh, and give you all the same tax benefits that your IRA has, but not the same asset classes. Right. And I think that's great. And I would, uh, I would absolutely encourage people to check it out. I think it's always a good, good thing to review your investment strategy. And maybe these are some of the things, some things that you haven't considered before that maybe it's a good time. And given the turbulent world that we live in today, maybe reviewing, reviewing your investment strategy is probably a very good thing to do right now. All right, well, listen, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. Thanks again, Jason, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.